Greetings viewers, this is Monitor Maverick coming back with another review video. Today we'll be reviewing the 1-100 scale Master Grade Gundam Sandrock from Gundam Wing and Let's Waltz. A brief history on this Gundam along with its pilot, this Gundam was the 4th Gundam or Gundam 04 created during uh, Project Meteor and Gundam Wing and its pilot was uh, a teenager by the name of Ketra Rababa Winner. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his uh, name correctly. The Sandwalk was constructed by Instructor H, a scientist, in the L4 colonies under the financial support of the Winner family. Designed for operations on land, especially in the desert environment, it has high compact capabilities and excels in melee combat with a strong armor that is more robust than other Gundams. One amazing moment during the series that I really enjoyed was there was a moment that Ketra, while piloting the Sandwalk, decided to use a self-destruct sequence in front of enemy lines. However, about a minute before it was about to, the Gundam itself opened its own cockpit, which to me was one of very few moments, if not the only moment, that the Gundam almost had a mind of its own instead of Ketra opening the cockpit himself. Sam, his Gundam Sandwalk wanted get Ketra to survive, to live. And I really like that moment because it really uh, it shows that Ketra think as uh, the Sandwalk as a friend. You know, it really is put into, into a perspective that can a machine be a friend? I mean, some people name their cars. But uh, jokes aside, I, I find that really very poetic in my personal opinion. The only other time that I think a Gundam kind of communicate with his pilot, I would say similar to Wing Zero in Hiro Yuri, but that would be for another time. As for Ketra, Ketra is actually, to me, one of the most peaceful pilots in all Gundam series. He actually was more of a pacifist than anything else. He mostly used his Gundam as a defense than offense, in my personal opinion. He won't attack if he really needs to. But uh, I definitely liked his character, and he actually went through a change, uh, some character development actually during the series. There was one time he kind of like lost himself for a brief period until he uh, talked with uh, Troa Barton because him and Troa actually became very close in the series. And because of that, he kind of got brought back to his senses. So uh, I would say out of all the main characters, I think he really went through the most development. Uh, him and of course the hero Yuri, but of course I would say if he was a uh, Yuri um, description for a future video. As I mentioned about the Sandwalk before, it was mostly used for desert um, operations. And it was never really used for space. And I was as I was researching for this review, I found out that... Um, they decided to make some changes to Sandwalk uh, so that way it can be much more proficient in space battles, hence Sandwalk uh, Custom, which this is a little bit different. For those of you who are familiar with Gundam Wing or Gundam Wing Endless Waltz, uh, in that movie, of course, the color was very different. Uh, Sandwalk was more of a kind of purple, light gray color mix. With this one, the color stayed true of its... Uh, TV version, but the entire concept, the design, is that of Sandwalk Custom from Endless Waltz, similar to how I mentioned during the Heavy Arms uh, review. But enough of all that, let's get to the review. For starters, the box. As you can see here, the Sandwalk is in its uh, stance with his swords. The sword is actually one of the most iconic weapons in Gundam Wing, or in other words, uh, Gundam franchises too. Because you, many people have seen uh, beam sabers, but this one is actually a sword. And this is uh, not just a stainless sword like a katana or anything like that, or even like a um, double bladed sword. But this is um, more so, I would say, a modified scythe sword combination. And I want to say scythe because that was the death scythe main weapon. And of course, that would be for another video review. But as the, these are called, these are called the heat shot tails, only because these are heat radiating curved blades that was the Sandwalk's main weapon. Of course, uh, 
when heated, that's when they are used against enemies which will basically burn other mobile suits in half while killing them. So definitely uh, iconic uh, weapons in my personal opinion. But uh, as, as I continue, this is a good stance, uh, very iconic as it was in the series. If we get a closer look, if you look here, this was made back in 2011 by Bandai. So this kid, of course, is 10 years old. A little bit different than how it is to today's uh, Master Grades, but uh, still iconic nonetheless. And as you see here, this is what I mean by the color differ uh, differentiation. Uh, this is, of course, for this kit, and this is how it was in the Endless Walls uh, movie. As you can see here, uh, a shade of purple or blue mix right here for the body and the waist. And uh, I would say it's like a slight uh, light uh, uh, gray for the shoulders. And of course, the heat shot tails are a little bit darker in the Endless Walls uh, custom than it is on the uh, current kit right here. And of course, the uh, I would say the head crest here is white with a yellow tint, and this is all red. And if you can see here, these are the other uh, mobile suits for this line. Uh, heavy arms, of course, as I mentioned, that I did a review on. And these two are the Death Scythe. This is not the Death Scythe Hell, this is just the first version. And this is the Shenlong, which was used uh, first and foremost until the Altron was the second Gundam used for Wolf A. Chang, or Gundam Zero Five. And of course, there is a Ketchu Barber winner. Again, don't know if I said the uh, middle name correctly. And right here is actually how much this kid is worth. Uh, 3,800 yen or 38 uh, United States USD or United States dollars. And here, of course, is the uh, gun himself, the stance. And you look here. Uh, you see uh, some good, really good stands, uh, how you can use the weapons. Uh, you can use a silver blade or a heated, uh, red, cl a clear, translucent uh, blade for the heat shot tails. And of course, you can combine it with a shield. And it has a little gimmick there, which I will show momentarily. Uh, so the shield, the gun, which this is only used for uh, this kit. I don't ever remember seeing a gun in the anime. But uh, then again, it's been a long time since I've seen it. And of course, there is a little figurine of Ketra Wawa Winner. And it shows you the weapons, the figure, the markings, uh, heat shot tail, and shield. As displayed here are the descriptions, and here are the pictures to associate with them. And there goes is the box. And of course, it comes with a instruction manual. Uh, very sleek. It was um, very simple from what I remember. And as you can see here, this is how they were all were in the TV series. So very different design. Um, the shoulders, I would say, in terms of side were the same, but this was more of a smooth curved crest, whereas here is a little bit different. And the legs were a little bit thicker, whereas here is a little bit more thinner and linear. Uh, so yeah, I would say this entire kit or the, the entire Endless Walls version is much more sleek. Whereas I believe the TV version had much more bulk to it. And the shield, of course, is uh, different. The shield was much more bulkier. And the shield here, of course, a little bit more sleek. So good amount of runners. I would say basic for any other Master Grade. Especially for his time. And start off with the body and the head along with the arms. And starts here with the legs. You get more uh, good animation moments here. Uh, you can see on the bottom right here, uh, you see all of the different uh, Gundams of this line. The Shandalon, the Death Scythe, uh, the Sandwalk, of course, and the Wing Zero. I'm kind of surprised that the Heavy Arms is not here. More the legs, the waist. Uh, put something all together, the backpack, the weapons. And some different things you can do with the weapons. And of course the layout for all the decals that comes with the kit. And here's a color association. Uh, what colors you can use if you want to custom, make, uh, custom paint this. Or at least make sure it matches with the colors for the kit. And of course some decal, um, detailing line paneling here. And of course what you can use for the figurine itself for, of Ketra 
winner. There we go. And of course, here are all the decal sheets. Uh, these are just stickers. And these, of course, you just need to cut and actually apply it onto the kit. I think I use uh, just water. As I mentioned in the heavy arms video, just use this similar to how you put decals on a car. That's enough with the uh, manual and the decals. Let's get on with the kit. And here we have the Master Grade 1100 Gundam Sandrock. And I will say that uh, this kit uh, looks pretty good. Uh, the colors do match well. I was a little bit hesitant at first, but uh, honestly, I can uh, say that uh, the colors here actually for me looks better than that of the custom. I was never a fan of the colors on the summer personally. I didn't really like it. Um, I kind of like the original colors a little, a little bit better. Uh, then again, the color, colors did make it stand out, so I gotta give it that. But uh, this kit does work better with the colors of the TV series. Aside from that, though, um, it's very proportionate. Uh, I don't. I thought the shoulders looked a bit big, but it does work well with the kit as a whole. So I gotta give it that. And uh, the legs do look good. Uh, I know some legs for some kids tend to be a little bit bigger, but I think everything just works well with this kid as a whole. Uh, definitely no complaints on my end. And one thing I do want to bring up is that, as you can see here, the sword, the um, he shall tells or the swords are attached to the backpack, and this kid does not have the issue with being uh, back heavy. Uh, some kids do, or some figurines entirely, but this is actually pretty stable. I gotta give it that. I really do like the fact that it's not uh, falling back at all. But then again, the swords itself are not really heavy, so it shouldn't be that surprising. But I just like the fact that it has a pretty good equal base and equal uh, weight to it. The one thing I do notice just by looking at this is the one part of the shield. It seems a little bit loose, but I will uh, show that during the full weapon uh, review part of this video. Now let me show you the, art the articulation of this kit. So for starters, the head can go ever so slightly only because of this piece of his head is kind of like blocking it from making a, three, a full uh, 360 degree turn. Uh, the arms do go all the way. And just be careful or else you will take this piece off. But there we go. It does go up just ever so slightly. And of course it can go forward just because of that action pose with his uh, he shall tells. I'm showing this arm. So that's as far it can go in terms of outward. I'll say it has a, a decent bend. Uh, fortunately, it's not the best bend. Um, again, this kit is 10 years old, so I guess at that time this was the best it can do. Uh, whereas now, you can actually, um, and a good elbow bend for today's Master Grace can be a little bit better. But I would say this is, I would say a decent, um, I would say 110 degree bend, maybe 120 for being linear. See, uh, there's a cockpit. So you can see um, Ketra in there. Uh, a bit of a waist swivel. Just a little bit, but it can go all the way around. If you lift one of these flaps up, you can actually move your leg all the way up. And a bend. Nice uh, 9 degree bend underneath. Nice uh, ankle swivel as well, all the way down, all the way up. And can this kit do the splits? Just move that out of the way. And yes, I can, even though it pop a piece of the race out. But split is a split. Uh, snap that back on. There we go. And there we go for articulation. And as for the weapons, this piece actually is the gun that I mentioned before. 
It's a Vulcan gun. And it basically is just this. It kind of, the handle does fold out like so. And this piece can go out like so. So it has a good, like, uh, support on the, on the um, arm. That's about it. And this piece here can actually connect to the back. There's a little slot there, so you can just place it there. And does it go all in the way? Whoops. And does it go in all the way? Well, it does uh, has a good support, so that's pretty good in my opinion. Or aside from that, you can actually place this right here on the shield. Like so. And same thing on the other side. And speaking of shield, I'm just going to take that off and show you that this piece right here is what I was talking about and that is a little bit loose. It can go all the way, but when you... Uh, but there is some, there is a gap there. It's not a big gap, so I'm not too worried about it. But at the same time, though, um, if I'm even though this kit is 10 years old, I think this was actually a little bit loose like this, even when I built it. So that's saying something. But uh, it's not uh, all the way, so it's not a big loss. And this is that's fully extended, but even even so, I guess just the weight just brings it down. I kind of wish it was just straight out and with his own strength he can stay like that and it can be another joint and you can just move it like so but just a loose joint one other thing i do want to show you and i actually need to take this out you can actually attach the uh the uh, heat shot tails to the shield But before I do that, these are the heat shell tails. Um, very nice, and then these uh, I will show you how to place them on a sand rock. But there's only just one little bend right here, and that's just for storage. So just get these, you place on the backpack here, snap into place, and you, you fold those up. And you can uh, just move these out as much as you want. Well, it's only ever so slightly. Oop, didn't mean to pop that out. The one thing I do like, these do stick in pretty well, so I do like that, but at the same time, it can be a little bit of challenging to take them out. As you can see, I just popped the backpack right off. There we go. But about this kit, though, the one thing I do like is that you can actually take these out. Like so. And this kit comes with red translucent ones. So all you gotta do is, if you look here, these are these little slits. And you just need to guide them in. And you should hear a good snap. There you go. So very good, red translucent, translucent, there we go, and a silver blade. So what I do with these, you actually get a shield, and these will go right here. So these little uh, bits here, that's on the shield, would go inside this slit. Like so. And these do have a little, um, I guess, claw action, so to speak. And then you can just place it back on the arm, like so. So along with the weapons, uh, this kit also comes with a couple other things as well. A little figurine of Ketua Baba winner. And let's see if I can get a close up. And it's kind of trouble focusing, but let me see. Let me see. 
Okay, I guess it's not going to let me focus, but that's quite all right. And just like the heavy arms, uh, this kit doesn't come. Most master grades around this time actually had a index finger and a middle ring and pinky were just on one single joint. Um, but only on this kit, only the thumb is a little bit uh, movable. Instead, what you do is you can take this off, and this has a little uh, peg in it. So you can put uh, the blades or even the uh, falcon gun in. And you can replace it with uh, four separate fingers, a closed fist, or just another open hand but it doesn't have that peg. Like so. There we go. This is what I'm looking for. So, just like I mentioned, there's a hole for the gun, and there is the peg for the hand. And you just need to place that in. Like so. Just move the thumb out. I actually think the thumb could be in a way, which is why this is not working. Let's see. Look with me, look with me. There we go. So yeah, and this is what I mean earlier. And of course, this keeps on popping off. Um, I think you all understand what I mean. But yeah. There we go. And there's the same walk, just uh, ready for battle. And now for some size comparisons. Here's the same one, grab beside the 144 uh, real grade uh, new Gundam. As you can see here, uh, yes, the same one is just slightly bigger or uh, slightly taller, but the fact that this is a real grade and this is a master grade, they are pretty close in height. So I, it's really surprising. I did look it up. The, the uh, Sand Rock is 16.5 meters, whereas the new Gundam is 23 meters. So I guess. Uh, in terms of this similarity, even though there's a 1 144 scale and this is 1 100, I guess if uh, I would put a Master Green Nuke on beside this one, it'll be uh, quite quite bigger than a Sandwatch just because an overall spec, the Nuke is indeed bigger than a Sandwalk. And here is he beside the Wing Gundam. Master Grade Wing Gundam. Um, so the Sandwalk is just slightly bigger just because of this head crest. But in terms of width, the Wing, wing Gundam definitely has that. And lastly, the Master Grade Shin Musha Gundam. And this one definitely is uh, slightly taller than the Sandwalk. But I'll give you all perspective of the size of the sand walk. Right. And that's it for size comparisons. And of course, this review wouldn't be iconic if it wasn't for Sandwalk's iconic pose. And I got I got to admit, this is holding pretty well. I wanted to take this time to actually uh, show everyone a certain part about this kit that uh, personally I think is a bad thing, and I'll explain in a minute. For those of you who are familiar with the high grade 1100 Sam Sandwalk uh, Custom, basically this is that same kit, but of course with the Endless Walls uh, movie version colors, in that kit it came with a cloak that you can attach to the shoulders 
of that kit. Well, the funny thing about this one is that it has the pegs for that cloak, but this kit does not come with a cloak. So if you still have the high grade um, sandwalk just lying around, the Alan Swalls version, the custom, uh, you can use that cloak for this guy right here. But at the same time, I just feel kind of like I, I like the fact that they uh, Bandai decided to have like a throwback. So if you have that kit and you have this one, you can uh, use that cloak for the high grade or the master grade. But at the same time, though, I kind of wish this kit came with its own cloak. Uh, just uh, one of those things that, well, you have the spaces for it, might as well have the cloak that comes with it. But unfortunately, this kit does not have that. And now for my final thoughts, the pros, the cons, and everything else in between. The pros. Uh, this was a simple build. Uh, it wasn't too difficult, at least uh, definitely not uh, after swimming because I've built. Uh, very simple and I do, did enjoy it. Uh, another pro was that uh, I would say this is pretty decent articulation. Uh, it still holds true after so many years, so I gotta give it that. Uh, it's greatly proportioned. Uh, I don't feel like a single part of the body is bigger than the um, rest of it. Like I would say the body itself is pretty uh, sleek. Uh, this, the design itself is pretty sleek. I do like that. Uh, this I wouldn't say this this is a pro, but I would say not just from the aspect of it. I would just say I do like the fact that Bandai decided to create these kits having the TV series color but with the Endless Walls concept. So I do like the fact that they kind of like decided to mix both of them. So I got to give them that. Uh, but I would say another good pro is that it, it holds up pretty well. I was a little bit worried that some joints were a little bit loose. The shield definitely is a con. That one, the one little piece at the end of it. But aside from that, uh, it pretty holds well. Not too many pieces fell off uh, um, after so many years. So I got to give it that too. And uh. It holds his weapons pretty well, uh, as you saw earlier. It holds the heat shot tails pretty well. The gun is being is being held pretty well too, so I gotta give it that. Now as for the cons, I, I, there is a couple. One con, of course, is what I mentioned earlier is that yes, it has those points so you can attach the cloak, but this kit does not come with a cloak, so I find it kind of like deceiving in some ways. I like that they decided to incorporate that. So if in case you do have the high grade kit, which is the, again, as I mentioned before, the custom of the Sandwalk Endless Walls custom, if I can talk, uh, of course, which is a different uh, color design. But to me though, it just goes to show if you have it, if you don't have it, then that's just a waste. So I, I not a big fan of that. Uh, another thing that I'm not uh, too big a fan of is it did to me, take me a while to get certain poses without it falling down. So yes, it can hold its weapons pretty well as long as it works. So it's uh, it was a mix and match. Once you get it work, it looks great. But uh, you gotta fill around with it too. I'm sure other kids will like that as well because it's a model kit. Some pieces do fall off. It is it's common knowledge to all uh, Gunpla builders. Or just model kit builds entirely. So there's that. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, another con is the shield that the joint there just a little loose for my taste. I kind of wish it was a little bit stronger, but at the same time, I can just strengthen that joint up if I put some super glue on it and just let it to dry. So it definitely will cause some uh, resistance and it will not uh, be as loose. But uh, that's, as a whole, I would say I am happy with this. Like after so after like I mentioned, this is a ten year old kit. It still holds pretty well. I gotta give it that. Now with that being said, is this a kit worth getting? I would say so. I actually do like this kit a lot more than I did the heavy arms, but I think that's just because I kind of messed up on the uh, paint job. And if you want to know more about that, I do. I did shot that video recently, and it is on my channel right now. But uh, aside from that, I do like this kit. Uh, the sandwalk to me was just a very simple uh, design. It wasn't my top favorite because it didn't really stand out. But the more I think about it, that's why it does stand out. It's simple. Uh, the death side, of course, had a scythe and it had these wings that can be used as a shield. The Shenlong, along with the Altron, had dragon heads for arms. 
Heavy Arms, of course, is a walking armory. And of course, the Ring Gundam is the lead Gundam of the series, or Ring Zero in the second half of the series. And that one just transforms. So the Sand Walker, the only thing that makes it stand out is the sword slash the heat shot tails. But that's one thing I do like it. It's just simple. And I think there's not too there's only very few, in my personal opinion, that are simple builds, simple Gundams out there. And this one definitely is one of them. So I highly suggest uh, to grab this if you can for a decent price. Uh, do I suggest this kit being your first kit? Even though it's a masquerade, I would say yes to that, just because it's not too difficult. So uh, I would say this should be a good one to pick up, whether you are going to bring fan, Gunpla fan, or just a model kit build and entire looking for something different to build. Thank you all for watching. Uh, this was uh, again a fun kit to, to review and a different fun kit to, to build from what I remember. Uh, definitely some good points. I did forgot to mention that the two uh, heat shot toes can combine, uh, but it's just uh, at the end of each point of the handle. So I completely forgot to add that, but uh, very simple. Simple to attach together, and in fact, that's holding pretty well too. So that's definitely another pro. But with that, with all that being said, uh, tune in. There's going to be more um, kits uh, I'll be reviewing. You have some of you have a good idea what's going to come up next from this video, along with my heavy on video. You've seen that. Speaking of which, uh, that was uh, th if you see here, there will be two videos. One of them is that, and the video that uh, YouTube think that would be best uh, to view. So if you haven't done so, please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, because there will be more videos coming. With all that being said, thank you all for watching and keep on building.